Hello, everybody. Do you find yourself looking at other people thinking they have nice flat stomachs and wishing you had that? You might think they have good genes or they must be lucky or they must not work at a job at all and just work out all day long. Why do you compare yourself to others and how this can hurt and help in your weight loss journey? That is what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Shape It Up Over 40. So hello, everybody. How are you doing today? If you are just finding the show or you are a longtime viewer, I want to say thank you for checking in today. If you need a refresher, my name is Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. With my online coaching programs, I do not give you meal plans or you don't have to count calories or anything like that. In fact, my motto is no foods are off limits. There is no diet in my program, any of the programs, and there are no restrictions and no deprivation, no insane workouts to do. And honestly, most of my workouts that I give my clients are under 30 minutes. Usually the average is 30 minutes, sometimes less. Um, the biggest piece of what I teach my clients is really understanding how their brain works. This is really understanding why you do what you do or you what you're not doing. And the mindset piece is huge in learning not just how to lose the weight, but how to keep it off. So if you're interested in learning how to lose pounds that are holding you down and then getting a master's lifetime degree in how to maintain that weight loss, I want to invite you to schedule a discovery call with me. So on your discovery call, we're going to talk about what you're currently doing or not doing, and we're going to find out what really you want to see happen. And I'm going to point out a few blind spots that you may be missing, and then we can talk about what it would look like to work together and how you can get the results that you want. So most people that leave my discovery calls say that call in itself was eye-opening. If you are getting that much out of a free call with me, can you imagine what it would be like to work together for six months or more? Life changing. You can request your discovery call at shapeitupfitness.com slash call, C-A-L-L -L at the end. Okay, so let's talk about comparison. So let's not lie. We all do this, right? I think it's partly natural and ingrained. Um, we look for people who have common traits that we have. And these are the people that we tend to be friends with, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You look at people as potential mates and there are certain characteristics that you are drawn to or repelled by. And again, I think this is natural and ingrained. We wanna attract a mate that has certain attributes that will keep our species alive. And whatever we deem as valuable traits, it's, it's really like a natural selection kind of thing. But then there is the looking at people and wanting or not wanting what they have. And I have to admit in my younger years, I would people watch, which I don't think people watching in itself is an issue, but when you start looking at other people and judging them or judging yourself because you don't have certain attributes that you think are more appealing, this can really mess with your mind. So this has been showing up in a lot of my client calls, this idea that blue-eyed blondes with long hair and beautiful skin and tiny tushes and bigger chest are ideal. Now, maybe Barbie started this for our generation, who knows, but this must have been suggested or imprinted, whatever you wanna call it. We have a certain idea of what we quote unquote should look like, right? Now, if you look back in history at models, actresses, magazines, TV, you will notice a wide range of what is considered ideal. It could be Marilyn Monroe, could be Twiggy, Jane Russell, more present day people like Angelina Jolie, Scarlett Johansson, Jessica Alba. All these women are stunning and none of them look alike. The influence of magazine, TV, social media, et cetera, has really messed with our minds. So who has set the standard for how women, quote unquote, should look? Is it men? And if it is, why do we conform to this? Because we want to be liked? Maybe. 
maybe societal standards are passed down, many societal <laughs> standards are passed down from one generation to the next, just like belief systems. A woman should be like fill in the blank, right? So why do we compare ourselves even to regular women walking on the street? And I think there's this other thought, especially for women, that a good man is hard to find, all the good ones are taken, and that women are outnumbered by men, so you better find a mate. Even if you're divorced or widowed, you know, the same scarcity mindset, I think, comes into play. Hence, women start competing for attention against each other comparing themselves against each other, looking at magazines and such, and, and subconsciously asking yourself, like, do I look like this? And if you don't, like, why? Why don't I look like this? And I think comparing has its place in the sense of, like, I like this and or I don't like this. And I think that helps us discern what we do want. But if you're not comfortable with yourself or your body, this tends to lead you down like a shame spiral of I'm not good enough, I need to look better, what's wrong with me, or some version of that. Now, I grew up in a mirror world. The ballet world is full of mirrors. If you, if you didn't know this already, there is always one mirror in the ballet studio that makes you look super lean. And you will find it because all the other dancers are trying to stand in that one spot at the bar. So just a little ballet. Uh, Nope. Um, and I also remember my mom telling me stories of when I was little and we would go to the mall to go shopping and she would always find me in front of the three-way mirrors, right? Making faces, dancing, or just looking into the mirrors. And I feel like I have lived in front of mirrors like 24 seven. Now I want you to imagine a world without mirrors, without reflective, any reflective surface whatsoever. How would life be different? I know for me, it'd be really different. Again, just because I said I grew up in that world. But in a world without mirrors, and even if nothing else changed, like the airbrushed magazines were still here, the filtered photos of Instagram, the movie magic touch-ups, you wouldn't be able to compare like we do now. Think about that. If there was no reflective surfaces, where would you see your whole body? You would only see what you see of your body looking down towards your toes. Now, yes, you could take a full photo of you and compare photos against something else, but just stay with me here, right? <laughs> of not being able to see your full body. So you would not be able to compare like we do today. Yeah, maybe if your stomach was sticking out and you can't see your toes and you were looking down, but you certainly would not be able to see like your backside the comparison would not be like it is today. You would not be able to compare. So no matter if we lived in a world with or without mirrors, who gets to set the standard for how you look? You, you get to set the standard for how you look. Nobody else, just you. So I kind of want to break your brain here a little bit. So if there are no standards other than the standards that you set for yourself, and there are no mirrors in any way to compare, what standards are you going to choose? With all this said, it does not matter what you look like on the outside because the work you wanna do is on the inside. The standard you set about you is on the inside. And it comes down to how you wanna feel in your body. Again, no reflective surfaces to use against yourself, right? How do you want to feel in your body? Do you want to feel comfortable in your body? What does feeling lean feel like to you in your body? Do you want to be healthy in your body? Do you want to feel healthy in your body? Do you want to feel like you can do activities that you want to do? Who is that new version of you that you want to become? The beauty of this is once you get the inner workings figured out, that's when the outside unfolds. Your waist gets smaller. Your thighs are leaner and stronger. Your arms are more toned. Your physique is the cherry on top. It is the last thing that is created. The inner part comes first 
then the outer part will shine through. So if you want help putting all this together, go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call and let's get started today on you and the standard you set up for yourself. The new version of you that you are proud of and light you up. You deserve to be lit up about you. So go get your discovery call right now. Shapeitupfitness.com slash call, C-A-L-L. And I will talk to you on your discovery call. Have a beautiful day and I will talk to you soon.